Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I would like to talk about my flexible PCB actuators and answer some common questions I get asked by you guys. Okay, so let's start with the first question. Magnetic paper, can we use it to monitor the magnetic field produced by flexor with it? This was suggested the most in the stepper PCB motor video as an easy way to debug this project. The truth is that I have already tried it, but it doesn't work. I'm not sure if you can get films that are sensitive to weaker magnetic fields, but these are usually used to detect magnets which have a much stronger magnetic field. If we use my magnetometer to measure the magnetic flux density of flexor, it goes to around 1.27 milliteslas. Now if we replace this with a tiny M52 magnet, it easily maxes out the magnetometer. Another common question I get asked is can these flexible PCB actuators attract and repel each other? It's just moving a little bit, but both the displacement and force are too small. These weak magnetic fields have to do with the fact that our coil doesn't have a core. I would like to take a moment to clarify something. In the past, I have referred to my PCB coils as electromagnets. Technically, they're not, because electromagnets consist from a wire wrapped around the magnetic core, and are usually used to pick up metallic objects. My PCB coils doesn't have a core, and they also need a magnet to work. The best term to describe them is voice coil actuators, which work very similar to a speaker, where you have a coil that is being affected by a permanent magnet. These are very commonly used as the camera's autofocus motors, and also in micro RC planes. Now, can we turn this into an electromagnet? Before we start experimenting with PCB electromagnets, I would like to say some words about this video sponsor. Skillshare is an online platform where you can learn new things and boost your knowledge. They provide inspiring classes on photography, freelancing, coding, engineering and more. There's thousands of science-related tutorials, even on magnetism. This specific class by Graham Von Bert explains the fundamental theory of electromagnetic coils. It is at a beginner level, so it's perfect for anyone who wants to learn more theory about this topic. If you'd like to get unlimited access to all their classes, you can directly use the link in my description. The first thousand people that click on that link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, so that they can further explore their creativity. Okay, so I got some different core materials and we'll be testing them one by one. All of these should improve the coil's permeability, but I also want to explore what happens when we change the size, shape and mounting technique. I started by testing this flexible ferrite sheet. If you remember, I used this in the early test of my PCB motor experiments to try and improve its torque. It didn't work that well because it's mainly designed to improve the performance of NFC or RFID antennas which operate at high frequencies. But I think this will still be interesting to test with the flexible PCB coil because it's just a sticker that can act as a thin stiffener. I decided to split the test into two, one covering the whole coil area and another one with a small piece of ferrite in the middle. I confirmed that it's no longer a voice coil actuator by driving it with a square wave and placing a magnet near it. As you can see, the coil's magnetic field gets completely ignored because instead of the usual flapping, the ferrite material just wants to be attracted to the magnet, independent of the pole's direction. Now, because of the higher permeability, we should notice an increase in inductance. The original inductance of flexor is 28 microhenries, and with the larger ferrite area, we got to 47 microhenries. The smaller ferrite square only increased the inductance to 30 microhenries. This is not the only parameter that should change, because science also tells us that there should be a bump in the magnetic flux density. This was confirmed on both samples, but it's important to note that this increase was only seen on one side, because on the other side the ferrite acted as a shield, blocking the coil's magnetic field. These tests were done with a 5V supply, and with the same voltage the magnetic paper still didn't manage to identify the coil. However, the coiled coil test was more effective with the ferrite sheet. Here, the coil is being driven at low frequencies, and like I said, ferrite cores are usually used for high frequency applications. So next, we're going to use a soft iron. I decided to test two sizes to make sure that the core doesn't get saturated. 
For both cases, I mounted the coil using some thin double-sided tape. Strangely, the inductance measured was smaller than that of the ferrite sheet, but both of them had a stronger magnetic field. However, this still wasn't large enough to move the flakes inside my magnetic viewing film. I repeated the same tests with a piece of mild steel, which I'll be using for an upcoming project. This also got a small change in inductance, and its magnetic flux density was quite similar to the iron core result. Now every sample that I tested so far had the core mounted on the back side of the coil, so I was curious to see what happens when you place the core in the middle. So this is a PCB we'll be using in a future video, but for now let's turn it into an electromagnet. I had these 5mm diameter ferrite rods that fitted exactly in the middle of the PCB, so I cut them into small pieces and repeated the experiments. Okay, so I summarized all the results in this table, and as we can see, this small mild steel sample produced the largest magnetic field, which was around 2.5 times larger than that of Flexar. The iron sample was also very close to this value, but the question now is, are these strong enough to attract some metal? I taped all the samples to a piece of wood and put them upside down to test if at least they can pull a paper clip against gravity. Both the steel and the iron core were attracting the clip, but the magnetic force still wasn't strong enough to suspend that 5 volts. All it needed was some more power. 10 volts, it's doing it, it's doing it! That is the first ever paper clip to be held with a PCB. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's actually burning up the electrical tape. The maximum temperature is 189 degrees Celsius. So our PCB electromagnet got a heating problem, but the concept kind of worked. The clip was also lifted with the steel core, and just to confirm, I also tried powering a coreless sample with the same 10 volts, which the paper clip was not attracting to. Things also started getting smoky. Its temperature was rising to 275, which is around 85 degrees higher than that of the core samples. I think this was happening because the metal core was transferring heat and act as a heat sink. To make it more thermally efficient, I decided to remove the double-sided tape that was acting as an insulator. This decreased the temperature to around 150 degrees Celsius. With this change and the 10 volts drive, the magnetic flux density was increased to 8 millitesla. This was finally large enough to be detected with the magnetic paper. I was also curious to see what other metallic objects it could attract. Actually, lift the USB port. So, those are all the experiments I have for this video. If you enjoyed watching it, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!